read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts. Are you tired of the secular news? Do you want a Christian view of politics? Do you want to know what is going on in your Christian community? Your wait is over. Welcome to the Intermountain Christian News Hour. Here is your host, Dr. Anthony Harper. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour. We are a voice of truth and uh, giving Christians an opportunity to share commentary and uh, their testimony. Uh, Got a great uh, website, imcnews.org. And today, my good friend uh, Patrick Klein from Vision Beyond Borders joins me today from the uh, great state of Wyoming. Thanks for joining me again, Patrick. Thanks, Anthony. It's uh, great to have you join me again to talk about the very important ministry of Vision Beyond Borders. So I'd like to, to start out with uh, you know you to share your testimony here briefly and uh, how you got into uh, Involved with uh, Vision Beyond Borders. Okay. Actually, I was saved at the age of 18 years old. I was raised in a Catholic home. Uh, my parents divorced when I was about eight years old. My dad remarried. We became Lutheran. Um, but our minister didn't believe the Bible. And so I actually got saved at the age of 18. I kind of searched a little bit in some other Eastern religions. And then uh, I got saved at the age of 18. And at the age of 21, I was called on the mission field. So I've been traveling around the world and uh, for the last 30 years, 32 years, and helping get the gospel out. And my passion is to get the Word of God into closed countries around the world and give it to everybody who wants God's Word. Well, very exciting. Vision Beyond Borders has been uh, going for how long now? Uh, actually, I started the ministry back in 94, but okay. I actually started doing ministry in overseas ministries in 1984. So I've okay. been doing ministry for 32 years overseas. Wow. And I know you've got a great website for people to learn and get some more information about uh, um, all Vision Beyond Borders is and your current needs. And, and that website address is that? Uh, that's Vision Beyond Borders. That's B O R D E R S, visionbeyondborders.org. Okay. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have uh, these website resources. Um, and they can get involved and uh, maybe even going uh, on on trips sometimes with you all? Right. We can always use people to come travel with us. Uh, we can always use people to help us carry Bibles or if you want to go visit the orphanages. Also, we have trips that go to visit, uh, help rescue the girls out of trafficking in Nepal and India. Wow, such a wonderful ministry. You know, I think it's about uh, human trafficking, a very serious problem. And a lot of that is uh, probably pornography. Right, exactly. A lot of the girls that we hear are even being trafficked from North Korea into China. About half of them are being used for online porn, uh, and they're trapped in houses in inside China. They can't go anywhere, and it's just horrible. And we're seeing an incredible increase, a terrible increase around the world. More and more women and children are being trafficked, but even in some places, uh, young boys as well. Yes. Uh, where we work in India, there's 7,000 uh, women and girls, and uh, unfortunately, as, as young as five years old. And uh, we also work in Nepal. We work to rescue girls out there as well. And, you know, I really believe that this is a sin issue. It has to do with uh, lust and greed. And I believe that the church, God's people, need to be out there sharing the gospel and ministering to these girls and showing, you know, telling them the truth of Jesus Christ, but then showing the compassion of Jesus Christ to work to rescue them out. Oh, yes. It's a very sad situation, and, and you're right. Sin is the problem. A lot of people deny original sin, and 
most likely because of pride. They don't want to admit that they are sinners and that we need a Savior. Exactly. Exactly. And, and what we're seeing is, you know, because women are so oppressed around the world, and especially in Asian countries and Middle Eastern countries, women are oppressed and treated like animals. It's very easy for them to use these women in, in trafficking, sex trafficking, and to take even young kids. And so we we really believe that God's, God wants his church to make the difference around the world. And, you know, in uh, I believe that Jesus would have us go into those deepest, darkest places. And, you know, when I go to the red light districts in India and Nepal, it's not a place that I enjoy going to. But I really believe that we need to bring the light of Jesus Christ into even those places, those darkest places. Well, may God protect you and bless you on these all these trips and uh, use you in a, in a mighty way. Uh, it's so important. And... Uh, you know, um, a lot of concerns uh, nowadays, you know, with, with terrorism and uh, Islam is being promoted as a religion of peace. A lot of people confused about uh, Islam uh, with the growing Islam immigration here in America uh, and throughout Europe. Uh, do you run into, uh, do you get in conversations about Islam with, uh, with people on your travels? Uh, yes, I do. And we also are working a lot in the Middle East and areas uh, in Muslim countries, um, you know, when they say Islam is a religion of peace, that is not true. It's a lie. Um, if you read the Quran, it actually says that Christians and Jews are infidels that we deserve to die. Um, a lot of, if, you, if you're if you honest and you step back and you look, a lot of, actually all the terrorism you're seeing around the world right now is actually perpetrated by radical Muslims. And so I really believe that we need to be praying for them. We need to evangelize them and do all we can to reach them for the, with the gospel. And I think we're seeing exciting time in history where we're seeing a lot of Muslims come to faith in Jesus Christ. And I think it's important that God's church is right there to help them and, and bring them in and welcome them into the body of Christ, but give them Bibles and, and help disciple them. And Because we don't know, the person, that Muslim, might become a terrorist. Terrorist. And so if we went into Christ, we've actually seen God turn terrorists into evangelists. And they're out there sharing the gospel. And, and what a greater testimony for someone that's come out of Islam to go out and tell other Muslims, you know, I've been rescued out of that. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ now. And that's what we're seeing is a tremendous turning to Christ. And, and they say what is opening to the gospel is they're seeing the compassion of Christians. So one of the things we've done is we just recently sent a 40-foot container full of supplies into northern Iraq uh, to help the Christians and the Yazidis that lost everything to the to ISIS in Mosul. And so we sent the container in. It just got in there last week. Uh, they've been distributing it. And our friend is just reporting. He's saying he is so happy. He said the people in northern Iraq are so happy because they've not been forgotten. And I believe it's important for God's people, his, his His church, to arise and to stand with our Christian brothers and sisters, especially in the Middle East, who are being oppressed and, and actually being, you know, slaughtered. We need to be standing with them and and helping them all we can. Because if if they all leave and go to Europe and America, the Christians, where will the gospel witness be in the Middle East? Well, some say that uh, America maybe in some ways caused the, the ISIS problem with uh, uh, taking Saddam Hussein out of power. Uh, Saddam Hussein wouldn't have let ISIS do what they are doing now. And, of course, there was definitely a vacuum when the U.S. pulled out. Well, and I, and I believe that we pulled out way too fast. Um, mm -hmm. I've met a lot of the refugees that were living, that live in church basements, living community centers, you know, and I told them, as an American, I'm really sorry. And I said, most Americans are angry about what's happened, that uh, ISIS has come in and killed so many people and, and the brutality and everything else. And, you know, they feel really betrayed. They feel like they've been left high and dry by the U.S. government. And I think it's important that we, as Christians especially, Christians from America and around the world stand with them and say you're not alone in this we're praying for you and, and we want to help you and so our friend that's on the ground in Iraq he said can you send me 11 more 40 foot containers full of supplies so we almost have two more filled and we want to keep sending those supplies to people in northern Iraq so they know the Christians in America and around the world do care for them and we do love them and we, we're praying for them and 
baptism we're praying also that these Muslims will come to faith in Jesus Christ so they will repent of their sins and repent of the deception and the worship of the demons you know a lot of people think uh, Patrick that a military strategy or a political strategy will uh, solve this it should be an economic solution but we know this is a spiritual problem and uh, yeah. Uh, there is a correlation between terrorism and lack of repentance and trust in, in uh, Yeshua, our Messiah. Right, right. You know, we really believe it's the gospel that's going to change these people because yeah. only the gospel, only Jesus Christ can change the heart of a man. You can you can try to talk to them all day long, but unless the Spirit of God moves on them, and, and I believe it should drive us to our knees, we should be praying. You know, I've heard even Christians say we should just nuke all the Muslims, kill them all. Well, that's not God's will. You know, and no. especially many of them are repenting and coming to faith. I mean, would we say that about, you know, unsaved people, just kill them all? That's not God's way. No, of course God's not. ways to evangelize them. And because we were there one day, at one time we were unsaved, and we wouldn't want somebody to just say, just kill us. And so I believe it's important that we have God's heart for these Muslim people. Many of them are deceived, Dr. Harper. Yes. You know, they... They have been raised in this from from childhood, from from birth. They've been raised in these lies and deceptions. So that's why we've got to get the gospel to them. So once they hear the truth, then the Holy Spirit can work on them, and they can. Start, and I think a lot of them are already questioning Islam when they see the brutality of Islam, especially through ISIS. They see Christians being beheaded, and even even Muslims being killed because they don't believe the same as ISIS does. So what's happening now is many of them are coming to faith but we as Christians should not be afraid of them but we should be praying for them and doing all we can to help them so they'll get grounded in their faith and that they can be a bold witness to other Muslims that is so important you know I think about how important it is for uh, Christians in America uh, to know how to be able to uh, reach Muslims with the gospel and there's a wonderful conference uh, that uh, I had heard about called Legacy Conference. It's in it's June 23rd and 24th in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it's an outreach of Horizons International. I think you and I were talking about Horizons and uh, what they're doing in uh, sharing the gospel with Muslims. And uh, this is a wonderful conference coming up. I'd encourage all of those uh, listening uh, to uh, register for this conference to learn how uh, your church uh, can have uh, can have outreach ministry uh, practically uh, to reach the Muslims and I, uh, Patrick, I had interviewed one of the pastors in Dearborn, Michigan, and Dearborn is one of the um, you know the cities that has a high Muslim population, and uh, their their church is outreaching by offering English as a second language, and they invite the Muslim people into the the church to learn English. They share the gospel message. They feed them there. And show that uh, show love towards them. Right, right. You know, we. What happens a lot of times is I think um, Americans we we kind of label them all as terrorists, and they're not all terrorists. There are many of them are just people trying to raise their children, right? Trying to have a decent family life, but trying to do what's right. Okay, but they've been brainwashed from a young from from birth. They've been taught that Islam is the only true religion and that Christians and Jews are wrong and need to die. And so it's important for us, first of all, not to label them as terrorists because they're not all terrorists. It's probably, you know, maybe 3 or 4% are actually really Muslim fanatics and, you know, a percentage of those are really Muslim terrorists. Yeah. But a lot of Muslims are just, they're just people. And I think when Christians, when we reach out to them with the gospel, because they don't know a God of love. They don't know a God that forgives. They don't know a God that would send his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for them. The God they serve is unknowable, and he's, he's wrathful, and he's angry, and, you know, he can lie. He can deceive people, and, you know, it's not the same God. And people want to believe in America that it's, Allah is the same as a Christian God. He is not the same God as the God of the Bible. And so it's important that we realize that they are deceived, but they need the truth, just like we needed the truth when we were in darkness. Yes, we do. 
I think when Christians reach out to them, and, you know, there's many young Muslim people that are going to schools, universities in America. You know, we need to reach out to them on the university campuses and, you know, over the holidays, invite them to our homes for meals and, and you know, let them see what Christianity is all about and that the Christians really, we love because Jesus first loved us. And that's something you don't hear about in Islam. They don't talk about love because their God is not the God of the God of their God is a God of hate and vengeance and anger. Yes. So that, when they, Christians live it different, they're they're attracted. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, wanting to share the gospel message with you. It is clear that you hear the message and respond as soon as possible. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Please humble yourself today and admit your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and be your Savior today before it's too late. If you died today without Jesus, you would be lost forever in hell, which does exist, contrary to what you've heard from Oprah Winfrey and so many others. Please respond today. To learn more about having a relationship with Jesus, you can check out our website, imcnews.org. And at the top left of our website, you'll see a Who is Jesus uh, banner ad, so you can click on that for more information. Also, you can call 24-7, this toll-free number, one triple eight need him and there's also a website www.needhim.org once again that 24 7 uh, telephone number toll free one triple eight need him are you tired of the secular news do you want a christian view of politics do you want to know what is going on in your christian community your wait is over. Welcome to the Intermountain Christian News Hour. Here is your host, Dr. Anthony Harper. It's so important to share uh, Christ's love. I had a recent interview with Pastor Saeed that was released from Iran, uh, yeah. and he talked about uh, how this is how we need to reach them is with uh, with uh, love, you know, reach out. And uh, uh, before I forget this this conference, for those that, the Christians who want to learn more about outreach to Muslims, here, um, that conference in Michigan to register is legacyconference.org and uh, great uh, website to learn more information about the, the guest speakers. One of them from uh, Rabbi Zacharias Ministry and Dr. Um, Nabil Qureshi. Uh, he has a wonderful test- testimony, and Abdu Murray is another uh, speaker, along with George Husney of Horizons International and Jay Smith, and then several others. But uh, uh, I don't know if you'd be able to attend that conference, Patrick, uh, but um, hopefully uh, someone uh, from Vision uh, Beyond Borders could attend that. Uh, I would I would like to be there as well. Yeah, I'll see what our schedule looks like. I know it's gonna, the summer's getting filled up pretty fast. Yes, I bet. You've got a lot going on now. Um, uh, what can uh, people pray for you about? Upcoming travels, uh, uh, some of your needs for supplies. Uh, what would you like to share about that? Well, first of all, um, if people would like to help us, we are working to fill two more containers to send into northern Iraq. Um, what we really need is hygiene supplies. Um, what we need is what people do is they fill up a, a Ziploc bag. They put uh, a bottle of shampoo in there, a bar of soap, a washcloth, uh, a of a toothpaste, a toothbrush, maybe a comb, maybe a razor, uh, stuff like that, just basic stuff that we can send. And our contact on the ground in Iraq said the people really love these. He said they've been really excited to get this stuff. Uh, they get one Ziploc bag per family. And, and we've actually had one church in Billings, Montana, that actually did over a thousand of these. And we've been sending them in, and the people are just really grateful for them. But one way you could really pray for us, kind of shifting gears a little bit, um, we just recently had a team that was arrested and put in prison inside Laos. These are Americans. Oh, um, no. Laos for over 20 years. Um, the team was actually distributing literature in some of the villages, and they did get arrested, uh, two teams of three, and they were held for two and a half days in prison. This is the first time we've actually had Americans arrested and, and put in prison inside Laos. And what's happening, Dr. Harper, is persecution is increasing in the country of Laos, and we'll talk about China in a minute as well. But uh, in Laos, 
the government church is sending a letter to the government, to our government, the communist government, calling for all house churches to be closed down and all the missionaries to be expelled from the country. And we see the persecutions on the rise inside of Laos. Um, we're also seeing God working in incredible things, uh, incredible ways. Um, we had a story about a man that was an alcoholic and a chronic smoker, and and uh, he had a bad cough, and some Christians prayed for him, and he was healed. And then he said, would you come back to my village here? And so they went to the village, and they're praying for about 200 people. A lot of people were healed. There's now 4,000 believers in that village. So we're seeing God really work in the country of Laos, but at the same time, we see Satan trying to stop the church. And so for our teams to be arrested and put in prison was a very intense thing to happen. Uh, I was talking to one of the young men just recently, and he was released. He was part of that group. And he, he broke down and cried a couple times. He said, you know, I, I realized that here I was in the center of Laos, and they took my passport. And he said, um, he said we didn't know if anybody knew we were in prison or not. He said, but I, we didn't know if they're going to take us out and shoot us. He said, I really had, I really struggled. He said, I had to pray a lot and really cry out to Jesus. And our team had a little taste of what our brothers and sisters face around the world. And so I'd ask that people please pray for the country of Laos. Persecution is increasing. And then also we've been having more persecution in China. Uh, report is that now over 2,000 churches have had their crosses removed, churches are being demolished. Uh, just a uh, uh, man and his wife, I believe a pastor and his wife, um, they stood in front of the church and they bulldozed the church over and they end up burying the pastor's wife alive. Oh, she no. Died. And this is happening in China. And, you know, the mainstream media is not picking it up. They're not talking about it. They don't care about Christianity. They don't care if Christians are killed. They don't care if churches are destroyed. And I think we're seeing more and more. I think we're seeing the lines being drawn, even in our own country, that either you're for the Lord or you're against the Lord. And I think it's it's time for the church, God's church, to arise everywhere around the world. But we need to stand with our Chinese brothers and sisters. Uh, we've been having, actually, we're seeing more and more uh, restrictions at the borders, and they're looking for more and more Bibles. They're trying to stop the flow of Bibles into the country of China, which is contrary to what we hear. We hear in the media that China's open, China's free. It's not true. It is economically, it is more open, it's more free, but not for Christians. And we're seeing persecution increase inside China. And so I ask that your listeners please pray for the church in China, uh, Faos, and we're hearing even in places in the Middle East where where other other Christians are coming under fire as well. So we need to be praying and doing all we can to help our brothers and sisters around the world. There is so much to do. Um, and uh, we do need uh, a strong time of uh, repentance and prayer. Um, um, Franklin Graham is on a 50-state tour. I'm assuming you're aware of of his trip to calling our nation to prayer and repentance. And yeah. it, America is definitely in serious trouble. And, uh, no, we need a move of God in our country, you know, and I mean, I, I pray a lot for the elections, but I'm praying even more than that, that, that God would send a revival or a spiritual awakening to America, because unless we have a revival, you know, you can get the right candidate in there, but unless God moves in the country, I believe that America's finished. You, you're right, you know, and there's, uh, we know that the a revival can't happen without repentance. It's it usually happens in a crisis, uh, a very trying time. And of course, in our nation, we're in a moral crisis, a real uh, a real assault on our religious freedoms. Yes, you know, and um, it's just incredible how more and more we're seeing attacks against churches in America and Christians being shot even in church buildings. And and I believe that you know Satan wants to destroy the church and. God's people, you know, he, he says in Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, repent, and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face with all their hearts, then I will hear from, hear from heaven and I will heal their land. He says, if my people, God didn't ask for the whole nation to repent. He just asked for his people to repent. And I believe that if we as Christians that get on our knees again and cry out and ask God for revival and say, Lord, have mercy on us. We deserve judgment. But God, we ask for mercy instead. 
I believe if we humbled ourselves and cried out, I believe that God would, would move in America again, and we would see a move of His Spirit. You're, you're right. It's, it's so important. I love that verse, Second Chronicles 7.14, and that, that pivotal part of the verse is turning from our wicked ways. Yeah. And uh, uh, you've seen so many people in prayer rit- rituals, and they're all around the world, uh, people spinning prayer wheels. And you think about all these prayers that are being uh, prayed around the world, but yet only God listens to to the ones of a repentant sinner. Yes. And, you know, I, I was blessed. I was talking to some Chinese believers, and they actually said there's uh, the Chinese believers inside mainland China are praying for revival to come to America. Oh, They're wow. grieved. They're grieved that our Supreme Court passed, uh, you know, same-sex marriages and saying that homosexual and lesbian marriages are, are right and and that they're on same par with heterosexual marriages. And, and they were grieved, and they said, we need to pray for America. And so I know of one church that's praying for America every week. They're crying out to God. And, you know, that's, that's encouraging in one point. Another point is sad because why aren't we praying more in our own country? Yeah. Well, I do hope that Franklin Graham's efforts to uh, call our nation to prayer and repentance are successful here. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't know if he's been to Wyoming uh, yet. There, okay, not. No. But uh, people can learn uh, more about this 50-state uh, uh, tour, uh, DecisionAmericaTour.com. Um, great website, DecisionAmericaTour.com to learn more. Of course, National Day of Prayer website is NationalDayOfPrayer.org which is, uh, by by the way, coming up uh, here soon, uh, Patrick, the National Day of Prayer, May 5th. Right, right. You know, I I just pray that there be a move of God, and I pray even that churches would open their doors one day a week and just say, let's let's turn back to the Lord. Let's take let's take Thursdays or whatever, and let's just take some time on our lunch hour or whatever. Let's just go and let's get on our faces before God and humble ourselves and repent. And and you know, I think too many people I think want to think if we put the right political candidate in that it's going to change America. Well, unless God changes the heart the people in America and start in the church unless it starts in us first right or I just don't see it happening it's got to happen in the church people have got to cry out to God and turn back to God and turn from their wicked ways and begin to really seek his face and not not just seek his face when the hard times hit but seek his face at all times mm-hmm well, I can just imagine what a father would feel like uh, when uh, their child only comes to them when they're in a crisis. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, as fathers, we'd like for our children to be able to call us uh, when things are going good, to be able to confide in us uh, all the time, just not in that uh, desperate time. And, um, you know, I just, yeah, I think about uh, what God goes through. It's hard to imagine is. He's so familiar with rejection, and Jesus is referred to as the man of sorrows. And uh, he knows what rejection is all about. And I, I, I think, think there needs to... I think there needs to be a move of gratefulness in America, too. We have a lot yes. to be thankful for. And yet, you know, you see so much people are so self-absorbed and they want more for themselves and what's best for me. And, and, it's, it's, and it's even the church. And it's like, no, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And, and as you said, you know, he's a man of sorrows. And w- what are we doing to honor and glorify the Lord? Is it so many people put themselves before the Lord and then... No wonder why his spirit is grieved more and more, and and eventually they don't even hear the Holy Spirit speaking to them anymore. No, we we can't. Uh, we shouldn't grieve the Holy Spirit, and we we need to honor Christ uh, in every way. And we are so blessed, uh, Patrick, that that he has been so loving, and it's not his not as well that anyone would perish. He has shown that ultimate sacrifice, given his life. Uh, for us, and um, appreciate you and and your team that you you sacrifice a lot to uh, to be a witness uh, for for good, and and uh, want to encourage people to check out your website once again, visionbeyondborders.org, to learn how uh, how you all can be uh, involved with uh, sharing truth and meeting the practical needs of people. And looking forward to seeing you again, Patrick, here uh, shortly this next month, and. Uh, uh, Anything final that you'd like to share with our listeners? 
just want to encourage people to really, you know, spend time in the Word, spend time in the Word and, and in prayer. And, you know, I was talking to a man in northern Iraq, and he was living in a church basement, and he said, you know, he said, I think God is disciplining us. He's a, he's a Christian man from Mosul, and he said, I think God is disciplining us. He said, we forgot God. He said, we stopped praying, we stopped reading our Bibles. He said, so I lost everything. He said, but now he's living in a church basement. He has a tarp separating his family from another family. He said, but I have my family and I have my Bible. And he said, we now have family devotions every night. We read the Bible. We pray together as a family. He said, I have what what matters most. I have Jesus. And, you know, and I just thought, when he said that, I thought, Lord, is that going to come to America? Are you going to have to discipline us before we turn back to you, before we really get back in the Word and pray and seek your face with all of our hearts, Lord? And mm-hmm. I, pray it does, I pray it doesn't take that. I pray it doesn't take us losing our houses and, and having enemies come into, into America and take over America for people to turn, to turn back to God. I pray it doesn't happen, but... I just pray whatever God has to do to bring us to a place where we put Jesus as number one in our lives. Oh, we definitely need need to do that, and it's uh, it's a desperate times, and we just des- uh, definitely so need uh, Christ, Jesus, our Savior, and so. Um, appreciate your, what you're doing there, Patrick. Invite all the listening to pray for you and the ministry there, and. Uh, um, so thank you for sharing with our listeners again, and I look forward to seeing you in the great state of Wyoming. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Thank Dr. you. Bye, Patrick. Okay. Bye-bye. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, an outreach of the Intermountain Christian Newspaper, making a difference. And uh, and we need uh, your support uh, of good news. Check out our website at imcnews.org, where you can download our newspaper and make your tax-deductible don- donation to support our uh, voice, our Christian concerns at the White House and in Israel and uh, other places. Uh, Do go online to uh, make your donation and support uh, this important news ministry, the only uh, evangelical Christian newspaper of its kind, a grassroots newspaper in our Intermountain regions, spanning from Colorado over to Reno, Nevada. And uh, we uh, currently have needs to uh, cover our, white, uh, our travel expenses for White House and Israel trips. Uh, and also, we need a donated minivan, a uh, vehicle, a good condition, low mileage, uh, air conditioning, and automatic transmission for delivery of our newspapers and other news events that we uh, go to to, to cover uh, representing Christian concerns. So please uh, make your donation at Tax Deductible online at imcnews.org just by clicking on the Donate banner ad that you see there. Thank you for your support of our good newspaper and for your prayers, and most importantly, uh, that we can continue to be a voice, a voice of truth for Christians in our Intermountain region, for the glory of God. We read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts.